What's going on there folks? Good afternoon. It's the Earthmaster here on the live stream on this beautiful Thursday, August 11th, 2022 date, about 12.18 p.m. California time. Latest quake uh, shows a 2.2 earthquake. Looks like just coming into the Alaska region, the latest quake on the Earthquake 3D globe. Uh, I do want to chat about some possible volcanic activity kind of kicking up out around the American Samoa region. I do want to bring up this image uh, real quick so you guys can read. This was put out uh, last night from the uh, USGS talking about, uh, well, it's an informational statement regarding felt earthquakes in the American Samoa. Uh, looks like earthquakes have been felt in the um, Manua Islands of American Samoa over the last few days and are ongoing. These earthquakes may be caused by a volcano, but, and they put in here, but a large explosive eruption is extremely unlikely. Experts, those experts are assess assessing the situation here. So kind of interesting, uh, getting possibly maybe some volcanic activity out there around the American Samoa region. Uh, earthquakes have been felt by residents of Tau, the largest of the uh, Manua group of islands in American Samoa for a few days and are ongoing. A team of experts is working on understanding the cause of these earthquakes and will share more information when it is available in another informational statement. There is a chance these earthquakes are caused by a volcano, but an eruption, as they mentioned, like Hunga Tonga uh, earlier this year, is extremely unlikely. Um, if you are at the coast in American Samoa and feel a strong or long duration earthquake, see a sudden rise or fall of the ocean or hear a loud roar from the ocean a tsunami may follow and you should immediately move to higher ground so this is uh, again put out from the uh, usgs uh, last night on their web page looks like definitely something ongoing there in the region of the american samoa now there's not a whole lot of um, earthquake activity i can get in regards to this um, Act, uh, this activity nothing showing up here on the usgs map um within the american samoa i gotta look around see if i can find maybe a, a specific network or maybe someone knows uh, send a comment below but through the usgs and also the emsc i can't find anything in regards to uh, earthquake activity here around the american samoa but obviously there is and uh, again that was put out from the uh, usgs now the uh, Tau Volcano here, we don't have too much history on the uh, recent eruptions or far as historical goes for that matter, not a whole lot. Um, it is a shield type of volcano it looks like here, 931 meters. Uh, current status is normal or dormant. But uh, again, these, uh, these earthquakes underneath there could definitely be volcanic in nature, right? And remember the USGS, all the scientists saying that uh, they weren't really too worried about the um, um, the Hunga Tonga volcano. You know, they, they, they had no clue it was going to do something like that. At least according to most folks there, uh, the scientists and geologists and whatnot. But that kind of uh, took a turn for the worse there when that thing popped off and did a huge explosion there underwater uh, with the Hunga Tonga volcano earlier uh, this year. Pretty... Uh, pretty dramatic in terms of a volcanic eruption um, so yeah I'm a little hesitant in terms of you know what these guys put out in regards to the uh, volcanic and earthquake activity you can see around the uh, Tau region a lot of volcanic features off to the uh, southeast and right around here as well this is all a lot of volcanic activity uh, and it sits to the uh, kind of about the northeast of the Tonga region, the Tonga Trench. Um, so it's uh, definitely worth watching pretty closely there in terms of uh, any further earthquake activity, any further uh, uh, signs of uh, some unrest there. Let me see what this uh, site here has. Talk about this is a National Weather Service here in the um, in the region. I'm going to have to look this over and see if I can find some, uh, of course there's a lot of information on earthquakes and tsunamis because it is a major area, but uh, far as far 
far as recent earthquake activity goes gonna have to look around for it and see if I can find it because uh, I haven't really been able to see too much activity all right guys let's see um, let's move on a little bit there from that region with their rainfall I wish we had some of that here along the west coast but unfortunately that's not gonna happen uh, anytime soon uh, in the area Locally, a couple earthquakes here from, uh, looks like at least one from last night. We had seen a pretty deep 4.5 into the uh, Fiji region at 623 kilometers. That's from last night. Since then, we've seen a little bit more shallower earthquake activity here north of Tonga, uh, along the Tonga Trench, but still somewhat deep here. Uh, 282 kilometers for a 4.4 earthquake uh, within that region. An EMSC model showing about the same. Uh, for this region of the Pacific. Uh, not a whole lot of renewed activity. It looks like there's one earthquake here coming in. Uh, recent, a 5.1 along the Kermadec Trench. Uh, I don't believe that one's come in yet through the USGS. Doesn't look like it there. Refresh this, make sure we do have the latest data. Yep. So EMSC a little slow on uh, producing some of these uh, preliminary earthquake reports here. But a 5.1 now into the uh, Kermadec Islands area. Again, we have been watching this region pretty closely. When these deeper earthquakes do kick up, folks, that's a time to watch the trench areas upstream. Uh, deeper activity, of course, adds further strain and stress and uh, volcanic activity too as well up towards the surface region. So uh, we're starting to see that with that 5.1 kicking up there into the uh, Kermadec Islands area. Let's see what else the EMSC has. USGS just a little slow. Come on, guys, got to get on the get on the ball there. Um, put, put maybe another cup of coffee might do it, right? Uh, low activity around North Island, New Zealand, up here on the map as well. Mostly threes um, in the area. I don't see any fours yet, but uh, things could change in that region considering all the deeper movement. Uh, but a, but a look here at the big picture. If you're looking at 4.0 and above, aside from that five pointer that kicked up here just within the last hour, uh, most of the activity again has been confined over here to the North American plate. I still think we need to watch the West Coast here pretty closely, unless, unless and until we see some sufficient large scale movement here westward. Uh, these areas tend to be on target and you can pretty much draw a line here along these plate boundaries. Uh, that includes areas also around the uh, Nazca plate and the Pacific plate boundary and the Cocos plate region, the Caribbean plate in there as well. But basically uh, this whole area under the gun until we see some sufficient large scale movement to the west uh, in the areas around this region and the adjacent plate. So keep your eyes open for that. We'll see if it happens today or not. Things definitely all too quiet uh, in terms of uh, westward movement here. Notice that? Look at that. Nothing showing up across the board. But if you go to the EMSC, yes, there's there's always earthquake activity in the threes and the two range. It does look like there was a 4.6 um, in the mix there, just around the southwestern portion of the Philippine plate. That one occurring just a couple hours ago, it looks like. Uh, USGS not showing that up there on the map either. Uh, so there is some spotty activity, but I don't think there's enough to kind of uh, um, curtail this activity that's ramping up here along the west coast region so looking at the west coast uh still some activity out here around the south lake tahoe area well south of there into the antelope valley now this area did see a six pointer last year i believe this is aftershock sequences here they've had quite the swarm of uh, earthquakes over the last week kind of came out of the blue uh, we were looking at uh, quite a bit of swarming earlier this year and then for about a month things went pretty quiet here uh, and then it all kicked off again with a four-pointer uh, a couple days ago. Let's see what it was, 4.5, I believe. Yep, 4.5. And since then, it's just kind of been ramping up with aftershocks. Uh, and that 4.5 is no doubt an aftershock because that six-pointer struck within this region, pretty darn close to this area. Uh, 100 and, about 113 earthquakes here within the last week around the Antelope Valley area. Looks like they're tapering off a little bit. The yellow ones, the older movement. Nothing within the past hour. Let me see here. I thought we had one within the past hour. Maybe we didn't. But uh, yeah, it looks like we did here. A little 0.9, 3.5 there in the last couple hours. So 
things um, still somewhat active along the west coast as I noted and I think they're going to stay that way until we see some further activity to the west. Cascadia subduction zone definitely showing some movement today with a 2.7 overnight. This one pretty deep. Look at that. 20 kilometers. Look where it sits at. Right smack dab on the Cascadia mega thrust zone. Been watching this area pretty closely here. Been a pretty hot topic in my vocabulary for many, many years. And then, I don't know. Maybe I'm alive today to witness this earthquake. Uh, definitely something I would want to cover. Uh, if this thing popped, um, yikes. It'd be uh, some devastation for the Pacific Northwest and Northern California. And, of course, the resulting tsunami that uh, would be sent throughout the Pacific. It'd be pretty hazardous. It'd be a, it'd be a bad day. Definitely, but definitely a big news story day uh, in terms of journal, um, being a journalist like me and covering stories. So, yeah, that would be, uh, I don't know, exciting. Okay, that's that's the word I would have to put in, in there for it. Uh, also, 1.8 earlier this morning in the Ferndale area. This one's somewhat deep as well, about 17 kilometers deep. Again, that's down dip here into the Cascadia subduction zone. Watching that pretty closely. Up here outside of the Mount St. Uh, Mount St. Helens area, seen a little bit of swarming today. Look at that. They got about five earthquakes, six earthquakes on the map. Woohoo! Somebody drinking their coffee this morning, adding earthquakes up there. Uh, looks like so far a 0.3, the largest, or no, 0.4, excuse me. The largest quake there at Mount St. Helens. So on that uh, note, let's go ahead and check out the volcanic seismicity map. By the way, here's the tremor activity. Notice a tremor we've been seeing uh, kind of migrating from the north down to the south here, uh, down in Northern California and Oregon region. And of course, tremor, you get that slow slippage down dip downstream here, adding further pressure upstream. And that's why we're seeing those earthquakes uh, down in Northern California, just to the west of this tremor activity here. And we see that a lot. Uh, and that's kind of just a little, um, little relation between those two and got to remember tremor activity is not just energy is not just disappearing it's being displaced uh, sometimes at the crustal levels and sometimes upstream uh, more towards the locked area of the cascadia subduction zone all right let's go check out these earthquakes here at the mount st helens region see what we got for earthquake activity and there it is listed on the map again I believe these are the result of the subsidence of the caldera here itself at Mount St. Helens. Um, we'll check out the uh, GPS stations here again real quick. I, I do cover it on occasion when we have these little earthquakes. Uh, let's check out this seismograph station here, one I like to check out all the time. And uh, do, do, do. let's see what we got here. There's that, uh, let's see which earthquake that is. That's going to be probably the 0.3, I believe. Let's check out the timestamp here. 0.3 at 1055 UTC time. 1055, where'd it go? 1055. Okay, this is, see, this is one of those things where the time is off, I believe. 1055 UTC time. I'm not seeing anything over here on the UTC date. This is more or less like between 220 and 320. 220 and 320 maybe that one so maybe this 0.4 is a little bit further away the 0.3 looks like it is closer to where my seismograph station is uh, that we monitor so 1020 and 1120 huh I, I just don't see it maybe it's one of these smaller blips here uh, let's go back to previous day. I'm going to be overnight timestamp and um, see what we got here. That kind of looks like an earthquake. 1320 and 1420. 1320 and 1420. Kind of goes back before that. Hmm. Yeah, so there is a little bit of activity, but gosh darn it. Like some days we see this thing really light up with a whole bunch of small microquakes and they don't throw anything up there shows no quakes on the map we have a couple earthquakes listed here on the map today and they throw up a bunch of them so and it's just a little odd but either way um again i believe this is subsidence with the caldera let's go ahead and check out the uh, mount st helens gps coordinates real quick here and i'll show you guys i like to bring this up because you know a lot of people think earthquakes um can be a sign of volcanic unrest well they can also be a sign of volcanic um subsidence as well you know like uh eventually the you know this area does kind of settle a little bit and this is the 
this is a trend this is a vertical uplift notice the downtrend here these are in mm not a huge number but uh over the last 2000 uh, since 2022 look at that continual downtrend there is it looks like there might be a little bit of a loop but it looks like it should follow this trend that's ongoing but it's a gradual decline over time uh, at least on this map since about 2018 as you can see here and there's a little bit notice over here looks like there's a little bit starting to uh, turn upward but it should mellow out and then turn back down again and um, it's just how it is that's a, the cycle that uh, takes place here again with many volcanoes actually they got that little trend that seems like every year each season you know it tends to um, do that little cycle there all right so let's move on from that uh, we haven't really covered too much and we're already what are we into the video here we got about uh, ooh, 15 minutes so far we'll try to keep it under 20 uh, some movement of course across the west here as noted all across northern California southward around the Bay Area as well getting some movement right off the San Andreas Fault outside of Pacifica 1.7 and some further activity down south on the creeping segment of the San Andreas Fault there's the activity in the Antelope Valley region Long Valley Super Volcano a couple small microquakes today nothing major going on there uh, but uh, Southern California lighten up it looks like within the last hour outside of Santa Clarita 1.5 some movement uh, North Marietta it looks like near the home gardens area 1.9 somewhat deep at 12 kilometers and uh, looks pretty active today on the San Jacinto fault zone nothing going on around the southern segment we start seeing a swarm here on the southern segment folks get ready but right now southern segment which extends roughly about here uh, well it does extend a little bit further but this part of the southern segment of the San Andreas fault has not moved in over 300 years this is the one that will be producing at least an eight pointer 8.1 I believe is what they say uh, someday when that will happen uh, who knows but it will not be a fun day down there for those folks but nothing going on right now in uh, the SoCal region in that segment uh, getting some activity up against the crest of the mountains here up against close to the Rockies around the Cedar Utah region getting in on some swarming activity again this area does see quite a bit we've been watching that throughout the uh, past few months Yellowstone National Park let's go ahead and pull up the latest uh, Yellowstone overview and this is uh, pretty much all the seismograph stations here across the park on an overview layout we got the Yellowstone caldera here in the black outline along with the blue waters here Yellowstone Lake not a whole lot going on there's that one earthquake uh, looks like from last night between uh, looks like around the 330 time frame I believe that is going to be I believe that's at 2.7 down there about 301 let's see what this was at three pretty close yeah that's gonna be that 2.7 that we seen down in the Idaho region notice the signature showing up across the park but more prominent down here as we get closer to the epicenter of that 2.7 but looking across the park aside from that things pretty clear folks not a whole lot going on uh, the rest of the country some movement out in Texas today with a 4.5 yeah it's a pretty good shaker not the largest they've seen but uh, definitely shaking things up out there overnight outside of Pecos Texas a 4.5 at 6 kilometers out there in the oil fields uh, Oklahoma getting in on a little swarming out here north of or uh, South Chickasha region it looks like what do we got uh, let's check out the satellite view and uh, see what's popping out there notice these little squares right a lot of some of these have these little ponds associated with them too um, oil tanks you can kind of see it here these little bitty tiny ones you can see it better on on the um, Google Earth view but we're not gonna jump into the, that yet but there is definitely uh, some old looks like some older ones older uh, pumping operations where these earthquakes struck today down there at the typical range of seven kilometers nothing big yet but uh, you can expect throughout the next years or so that we should start seeing more prevalent fours and possibly fives uh, throughout this area where all these uh, oil pumping operations have taken place over the years nothing going on across the eastern portion of the coast one earthquake way up in Canada 3.6 
uh, movement down in the Puerto Rico area, somewhat active today as well, although nothing within the last hour. One earthquake down in the Mexico region, 4.3. This one pretty deep, folks. Look at that, 134 kilometers into the middle America Trench here, down dip. So things could be getting active here along this section of the Middle America Trench off the coast of Guatemala a region. Uh, Got to watch that. Remember, deep earthquake activity does tend to add further strain up here. So if there's enough strain and stress, uh, we'll see a release of earthquake activity possibly larger along the Middle America Trench. South America, not a whole lot going on. A couple scattered earthquakes out there. There is the earthquake in the Kermadec Islands area. Took them a little while. Took them almost an hour. <laughs> <laughs> almost an hour to put it up. Uh, they've downgraded that 5.1 to 5.0 in the Kermadec Islands, New Zealand, uh, at 38 kilometers deep. A little deep here along the trench. So, again, we're waiting. We're watching for possibly some larger scale activity here where it's been awfully quiet the past couple days. Alrighty, uh, what else we got? Solar weather activity is kind of ramping up uh, slightly. Let me see if I can pull this up here real quick. Uh, stand by, there we go. Uh, and that's got to do, look at that. <laughs> These unexpected events happen almost daily with the sun. Although, a lot of times it's got to do with the interplanetary magnetic field. And it looks like we're creating a little southward trend on that, allowing some solar wind stream to flow right into the uh, Earth region or the uh, uh, Northern Hemisphere. I'm sure the Southern hem Hemisphere is there as well. Look at that. Pretty amplified right now over in Ant Antarctica. Big time. Uh, so this is a G1 class storm. Uh, looks like KP index of five is expected. We are up there around four right now. Uh, I'm sure that's gonna be, I'm, I'm pretty certain we're up there around five, but uh, this map here, not quite uh showing it let's see what we got here yeah we're up well this here this is a couple different uh let's see here. that's kind of a pretty good elevated chart there so that should be right around the five right now definitely kicking up pretty nicely some of those readings up there around the six range. Whew. So what are these guys calling? Looks like 50% chance of a higher latitude storming conditions. I'm sure that's certain right now. Uh, of course, it is daylight. Uh, maybe certain sections up there where it's starting to get dark. We'll see that on the other side of the world. Uh, but this is, again, this is due to a southward trend, a tilt on the BZ component here. Notice that uh, red line kind of dipping south allowing some solar wind stream to flowing flow in now notice that we're not seeing any mega um, um, hit so to speak far as elevated uh, speed or density or temp just happened to be a, a, a little uh, wind stream floating I shouldn't say floating but uh, kind of going towards the south here uh, containing a sector of south pointing BZ this is helping to disturb the geomagnetic field and a minor G1 storm watch will be in effect until yeah, it looks like a little bit later UTC time. So yeah, it's kicking up for sure. Uh, sometimes these things pop up when you least expect them, but far as solar flare activity goes, there's not a whole lot going on yet. Uh, getting a little crackling here up into the low C flare category. And um, see what we got for sunspots. I've been watching these. They're starting to grow a little bit here. But uh, still no major developments here around these sunspots that could produce anything significant. Maybe here a little bit of mixing, it looks like, of the polarities. But uh, we'll watch it in the coming days and see if we can get uh, at least maybe an M-flare or whatnot to pop off. We'll see how it goes. All right, guys. Have a good day. Stay safe out there again. Keep an eye on Western Pacific there. And um, I know the Earthquake 3D Globe looks like they're showing... Um, a couple fives in that region. Let me see what we got here. One of them, yeah, there's two two five pointers here. One should drop off here soon. And, um, of course, got the combination here of the EMSC and the USGS model. So sometimes they do pop up there at the same time. Let's bring these magnitudes back down to 2.1 and above. And uh, we'll watch what it does today. Stay safe, and we will chat you guys a little bit later on. 
I got some more work I got to do in the garden today. Got got an aphid infection. Infection. <laughs> oh goodness. Infection. That doesn't sound right, does it? <laughs> Excuse me. Ah, oh, they took over my garden pretty much, and I got to get them out of there. And um, I don't know if I'm gonna have to burn them or what. It's supposed to be 100 and something today, so I have to wait till it's a little bit cooler. But got to pull them out of there, get them away from our uh, our good part of the garden that's still sustaining life and healthy leaves and uh, hopefully get control of these aphids because they're on they're a little pain that's for sure all right guys have a good day stay safe we will chat at you a little bit later on peace out